Monmouth College. Monmouth College fire is where I lost my best friend. Uh, uh, it was 1984. It was July 3rd. It was an elevator fire. And we went in the building to to uh, do a search and, uh, and ventilate the rooms. And my best friend who was with me, Michael Thorne, uh, opened up a door, which was an elevator shaft, walked in, and fell 48 feet. And I was 20 at the time. He was 19. So uh, it was the worst fire I've been to. And uh, it's hard burying one of your brothers. Yeah, after, after that, you really you find out who your friends are in the fire department. And there are a lot of them. And then the weirdest thing was the next time you heard the fire whistles ring. You didn't know whether you were going to get up and go or just stay in bed. And after the first time, when 10 or 12 of us showed up, you knew what you were going to do. Uh, everybody's dream in the volunteer fire department is to become an officer, which you, you run the operations at a fire scene, and to one day become fire chief. In 2003, I was assistant fire chief. In 2004, I was fire chief. It was a very big honor for me. Never thought I would get there. I never thought I would do it, and I did it. And it's just an accomplishment that you could always look back on. Michael's father held the Bible for me uh, as I got sworn in. I'm still very close with the family. Uh, we do a charity run every year for him. Uh, and we donate about eight to $10,000 worth of scholarships a year in his name. So it was a good day. When 9-11 happened, I, was, uh, I worked for Coors. I still work for Coors Beer as a driver. I was delivering beer in Long Branch when I saw the first plane hit. The, hit or I was delivering, and the guy said, look, come look at the TV, a plane that hit the buildings. So he said, oh, it's a small plane. And I looked at it, and I said, no, it's not a small plane. I said, it's an act of terrorism. I called my father. I said, go to the school and get my two kids out of school because I knew I was going to be in New York City by the end of the night. By the afternoon, myself and about 15 of my friends from Long Branch and West Long Branch Fire Department made our way to Highlands to the ferries. Um, they, were doing, uh, they were doing decontamination of people coming off the boats, spraying. A friend of mine that went up to, I went to school with was a captain of one of the boats, and we were in contact with one of our friends in the city that was a fireman and he kept calling and saying, we need help, we need help, we need help. So we made a connection with the, with the waterways ferry and uh, 15 of us went up on the, on the ferry about 2.30 to New York City. Uh, what I remember most is when we were coming under the Varens on a bridge, there was, um, there was a sailboat sailing in the harbor like nothing was happening guy was just out there for maybe that was his relief of the day out there in a the sailboat and then as you came under the Varanzano Bridge two Coast Guard gunships came up to the ferry with their machine guns and sidearms and everything drawn out and they let us pass because they knew you know we were firemen or the ferry was going to cart people out of the city and then we arrived at South Street Seaport as we were trying to dock the boat the people were just jumping onto the boat to get out of the city it was a scene out of like dunkirk during world war ii is what it reminds me of the people trying to get out from the city of dunkirk and we were trying to go in uh we checked in at a firehouse right in south street seaport being on site at the world trade center was uh very I don't, it's, it's hard to describe. You could take the 10 worst things you've ever seen in your life, times of times 10, and uh, you wouldn't even get to, to the point where we were. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't tell the difference between uh, body parts or building parts. or There was no office furniture. There was just millions and millions of pieces of paper flying around. There was 
like nothing that was associated with being in an office. There was no books. There was no TVs. There was no desks. There was no chairs. Everything was just polarized. And you saw the mangled fire trucks and the equipment. And when you walked in, when you got into the city, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And then every once in a while, the wind would change and the, the sun would shine down. And you would hear the fighter jets fly over New York City. And everybody would run for cover because you didn't know what was happening. We had we were searching some piles and they gave you a little bucket, a little five-gallon pail that you would get at Home Depot. And this was to look for pieces of people. Right. Uh, fingers, whatever you could find, you'd put in a bucket. Right. After the first hour, it just was like picking up trash. It was so bad. Right. Uh, the biggest part that we found was a torso. Right. And uh, makes you appreciate life a little better.